We are at the beginning of the second writing project, and the task in this assignment that can slow you down and create a lot of stress is finding an appropriate scholarly article. You must read the assignment carefully and take the suggestion to talk to your reference librarian at any campus about an appropriate article for this assignment. Although you only need one source in this project, it must be approved by me, and I will not accept review articles, non-scholarly websites or web articles, nor brief notes disguised as scholarly articles. I'm trying to help you make a wise choice of a poem by restricting your choices to a list of poems that are well known. In the past, students have chosen obscure poems that, while they were interesting, did not have any articles published about them, and so then students would have to go and pick another poem and start the search all over again. So I hope that this restricted list will help you out. In this slide presentation, I'll make a few suggestions, and I'll monitor the discussion that we have about finding an article on the discussion thread for this topic. Here's another reason to speak to your reference librarian. Librarians can steer you toward appropriate journals, both in print and in online databases. In addition, they can show you how to find books of articles. Um, what is a book of articles? Well, often a scholar will decide that uh, he or she wants to edit a book on one topic or one author or one author's work of literature, and so then they will send out a public request for articles from other scholars. And you can often find a good article on your poem in such a book, and librarians can show you how to find those kinds of books. On this slide, you see some common characteristics of scholarly journals and articles to try to help you distinguish them. Please do not assume that if you wait until the last minute, I will accept substandard sources. If you are forced to write uh, with a substandard source, your project grade is going to suffer. So please search early and find something that's acceptable. So let's look at this list of characteristics of scholarly articles and scholarly journals. Scholarly journals have no ads, they have few pictures, maybe a topic like art or history might have some um, photos or images, but mostly scholarly journals look pretty boring. They just have a lot of writing in them, and that includes even if they're online. Scholarly articles are lengthy, and of course length depends on um, the discipline. Um, for example, in some of the sciences you might find some scholarly articles that are six to ten pages long, uh, whereas in the humanities you might find scholarly articles that run to 25 to 30 pages. So uh, both of those I consider to be lengthy. It just depends on the field that you're in. In English, um, a five to six page article would probably not be acceptable. That would probably just be a note and not a regular article. Scholarly articles themselves are research, and so they have a lot of notes and references, usually um, and notes, but some of some journals print notes at the bottoms of pages, and they all would have a works cited list at the end. And the authors of scholarly articles are themselves college and university professors. And then the last thing on the list is that book of scholarly articles that I mentioned to you. And here again, your librarian can help you find such a book. When you're looking at a database citation for an article, it will tell you if it is a review article, usually in the type category. There are a lot of reviews out there, and they will come up in your searches um, unless there's some way for you to filter them out. But uh, they will probably come up in your searches because reviews are another way to get published and professors need to get publications to keep their jobs. And uh, so there are a lot of reviews out there. There's nothing wrong with them. They're just not appropriate for this assignment. So if you run across a review, keep searching. And then you will be tempted, I know you will be tempted, to use what's called a note article. And this is a brief idea of an article that hasn't really been developed into a full-blown scholarly article yet. Sometimes they're in a notes section of a scholarly journal that has regular articles too, and so you have to pay attention 
to whether it's part of a notes section. But there are also a few journals out there that only publish notes. One well-known uh, journal that only publishes notes is the Explicator, and that will probably come up a lot in your searching. And another one is called Notes and Queries. You see it even has notes in the title. So notes may only be a few paragraphs or even a few pages long, but they seldom have any sources. And the problem is that they don't explore a subject in depth. They're just kind of a beginning idea. And here's another case where somebody's trying to get published. They haven't written a full article yet, so they decide to publish maybe one little interesting fact about a work that they're going to write more on later. And so they publish this note, and that's another way that they can um, show on their resume that they're doing some sort of publication. So if you run across a note article, keep searching. And then some of you will try to avoid all my advice and search the web and probably do a poor job of it. Um, so, you know, if you have to do a Google search, at least try Google Scholar. If you don't know about Google Scholar, then uh, you'll want to follow the link on the next slide and uh, take a look at it. Uh, it does uh, do an okay job of finding articles that are available online. Sometimes it will reference you to an article that uh, you, you cannot access because you have to subscribe to a certain service or um, journal in order to get it. Uh, and, and that would be my argument for uh, suggesting that you search from databases in the library. We have access to a lot of databases at Tri-C. We have access to Ohio Link that searches the entire state for articles. So, you know, you really would be better off using the library databases than um, just trying to rely on your own searching on the web. Here are a few links to get you started, and there are more in the project lesson package. If you have trouble figuring out how to use the library databases or how to narrow your search parameters, talk to a librarian. That's why we have librarians. They would love to help you with an assignment. I would suggest that you print out the, your entire writing project lesson by using that print all feature uh, link that's in the upper right hand corner of uh, each lesson package and taking those pages with you so the librarian knows exactly what you need to find. Here's a screenshot of the database tab on the LibGuide for English and it shows relevant databases for literature. I've pointed to two inside the um, square box partly because the um, trend today is to take whatever comes up first in a search. But scholarly research databases do not work like Google bringing up the most popular searches first. And even if they did, popularity is not the same characteristic as quality. The trick in doing research is to learn how to narrow your search to a reasonable number of results, say 50 or less. Then you skim through the titles, looking also at the names of journals. Don't take ones with notes in the title. You look at the number of pages. Less than five is no good. And make sure it's not a review article. Then you collect a few and start reading them to see which one is the most interesting for your purposes. Um, and I'm assuming here that by the time you find your article, you already know your poem pretty well. You've read it and you have your own idea about what the poem means. In addition, you must be realistic and expect that your first choice of poem will not lead to any interesting articles. I have seen that happen before, although I'm trying to prevent that in the assignment. So here's what I did. I've pointed to those two databases in that box, and here's an example of what I did with them using Sylvia Plath's poem, Daddy, as an example. In the MLA International Bibliography, I put Plath, just the last name Plath, in the first search field, and I chose nothing from the field options. In the second search field, I put in Daddy, and I chose Title from the field options. So I, I put Plath and Daddy in, and for Daddy, I chose the uh, option of Title. 
Then I ran the search and I got a list of good and not so good articles, but at least two or three of them that would work for this kind of assignment. In the other database called the Liter Literature Resource Center, uh, which works a little bit differently from the MLA, I only typed daddy in the search field as a keyword just to see what would happen. The results were all over the place, as you can imagine, because daddy is such a common word. But in the sidebar that came up on the left uh, with, uh, with the results, there were a lot of different ways to narrow the search. And one of the things in that list was the choice of Sylvia Plath and Daddy. So I clicked on that, and then the results were just what I wanted. In fact, I got pretty much the same articles that I had looked for in the MLA bibliography. So, are the most famous poems like Daddy going to give the most results? Yes and no. Um, it's, you know, potluck. You never know what you're going to get. But I have tried to help you by confining your choice of poem to ones that are very well known, so I hope that works. I would have liked to let you pick your own poem from the textbook, but finding the right source is really the more important part of this assignment. Still, it is possible that you won't find an article that um, pleases you, that is easy to read, and that fits the requirements, so you need to start searching as soon as possible. So what do you do after you find an article? Well, make sure that you view the next presentation on writing a summary. After you find a source, the next task is to begin writing, and so you need to understand the specifics about how to write a summary correctly. Um, your first draft will be rough. It should be. That's why we call them rough drafts. If yours have not been rough in the past, if you're first drafts have always been pretty much like your final drafts. Um, I think this will be a case where um, your first draft is rough and you'll finally understand what that phrase rough draft means. And you'll be glad that time for revising has been built into every project in this course.